It's a beautiful, warm, and sunny afternoon at the World Center of Speed. And for the first time in Speed Weeks 2006, NASCAR Nextel Cup cars are about to hit the speedway. Practice for the Budweiser shootout. IROC practice just concluded. The shootout cars on their way out from the garage. And let's go downstairs and meet someone who's not a Pittsburgh Steeler, but who's also <laughs> looking for one with the thumb. He's with Marty Snyder. And that would be Jeff Gordon, of course, that uh, championship you're referring to. He already has six Daytona wins and kind of experience with this race, too. 13th Bud shootout. You ready to get the season cranked up, Jeff? I am. Good to see you, Marty. Good Hi, you guys <laughs> in the booth. I uh, can't believe it's all starting back up again, but we're, uh, we're pumped. You know, Daytona's, especially for the 500 week, it's always been good for us, and uh, we had a great test in, in January, so we're, we're pretty excited to get out there and get on the track and see, uh, see what we've got. When we, when we did uh, the drafting practice with this car, we felt like we had to make a few adjustments to it, uh, arrow-wise, and, and we've done that, so we'll find out if it helped. How do you make the decision on which car you're going to bring for the shootout versus the car you're going to bring for the 500? It's pretty simple. You bring the fast <laughs> one for the 500. Uh, you know, and some guys will build cars that are identical. Uh, this is a great driving car. Uh, you know, it's a good backup car, but it's it's def it definitely was not the fastest car that we had down here. That That's the 500 car. All right, and uh, what do you expect to get out of tomorrow night so you can learn for the 500? Well, you know, because the, this car is not as good as the other one, you know, if we can if we can get a good balance on the car and, and just learn what the tracks can really, you know, I think it's more, uh, I've got a new spotter, a new crew chief, uh, you know, a lot of new guys on the pit crew. I think really for us, it's just about building chemistry within the team more so than really find out a whole lot because the track conditions aren't the same. The car's not the same. Uh, you know, and, and, and we've only got half the field out there. So I don't know if there's a whole lot we're going to find out on the racetrack, but the other thing is what I'm excited about getting going. Well, Jeff Gordon gets our season going here on Speed. Dave Burns, who have you hooked up with? With Carl Edwards right now, Marty in the 99 car getting ready for his first shootout practice. And, uh, Carl, you've been down here for testing. What do you think about uh, getting out for your first shootout practice? I'm really excited to get on the racetrack. I can't even tell you. Um, the Office Depot Ford Fusion was really good in practice or in uh, testing, and hopefully it, it uh, goes well for us. I mean, I don't even know the whole format of the Bud Shootout yet. I'm learning all this stuff, and I, I'm pretty pumped to be in the race. And, and it's a pretty big deal for you guys this year, you know, debuting a new mark, having the Fusion out here, and so it's, it's a pretty big deal for Ford to even be here at Daytona this year, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we've got Kenny Schrader in the Fusion on the pole. That was pretty cool last night when he, uh, when he did that deal, so uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you didn't draw very well. What happened there? I drew 11th. I mean, that was. It's uh, not top 10, though. I know. Um, they top said, 10 means everything now in this sport, you know. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know that. Uh, but I think that I think they said that nobody's won the 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 race, the Bud Shootout, from inside the top 10 in some number of years. So, could be good for us. All right, Carl Edwards, getting ready to get in the 99. See how it works for shootout practice, Mike. Thanks, Dave. Kenny Schrader was the last driver to win the shootout from the pole, and that was way back in 1989. Welcome back, folks. We're glad to be back with Larry yeah. McReynolds, Jeff Hammond, I'm Mike Joy. And boy, Jeff Gordon touched on it. Everything is new. So many driver, crew chief, car owner, sponsor, number changes. To make sense of it all is going to take, well, the next 10 days. Next 10 days, Mike. I mean, it's basically, hey, crew chief, buddy, it's time to get serious. I mean, Jeff Gordon was talking about, hey, I got a new spotter. I, you know, Steve Letarte's really first time under the helm as far as here at this Bud Shootout. Carl Edwards trying to figure out the format. Come on, buddy. You got to get in the program. It's time to get serious. We're here at Daytona. It is the first practice, but for a lot of these guys, it is going to give them an opportunity to tune up. I mean, start working on your dra drafting, start working on who's going to be your partner for tomorrow night, but just getting kind of back in the rhythm, guys. Well, Larry, let's expand on what Jeff Gordon spoke about, bringing your second best piece for this race, the Bud Shootout. Yeah, but trust me, even though the conditions will be different, they will learn. Because remember, they have that new Monte Carlo to work with. And even though they went through a lot of testing with this new Monte Carlo, they did a little bit of drafting when they were down here in January. This is where everybody lets it loose right here. There's no pressure. Everyone that's going to be practicing, they're in the field because they drew for qualifying. But I think the big thing is, of the 21 teams that's in it, it's what Jeff Hammond just talked about, 11 of those 21 teams had a major component change 
either a driver and or a crew chief. This is where they're under the gun and they can get their feet wet with each other and learn when he says loose, it's loose, and when he says push, it's push, and what we're going to do to fix it. So let's have fun with it for the next hour. 21 cars expected to practice for the Bud Shootout. There is Jimmy Johnson's new paint job. Jamie McMurray is 26 today. Well, that's his new car number. Oh. Speed's coverage of Bud Shootout practice is brought to you by Zales. Be brilliant. Shop the Valentine. Sale at Zales. Let's go back down to the garage and rejoin Marty Snyder. Elliot Sadler making his second career Bud Shootout uh, appearance. Uh, how did the Fusion, the brand new Fusion, react in the draft here in testing, Elliot? I tell you, I was really happy with it. Um, it drove very good, uh, Ian. In behind cars, and when cars got behind me, I, I think the Fusion is definitely uh, a little bit better nose than what we've worked with in the past, and we were very happy with it. It responded to every change that Tommy and, and the guys threw at it. So uh, the M&M's Ford drove very well, and I'm just kind of waiting to see what it drives today. Track should be a little slick, 20 cars out there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you mentioned that track being slick. Jeff Gordon brought the point to conditions right now, extremely different from what they're going to be tomorrow night. should be cool. So what do you get out of this practice? Practice. Well, I think if, if you can get your car driving good today, it, it's just going to make it that much better at night. Uh, a good handling race car never really changes here at Daytona. If you can go out there and run 15 or 20 straight laps and keep the, the foot on the floor the whole time, you're going to have a great chance of winning a shootout tomorrow night. So we think we got a pretty good setup in it. Uh, we, if it drives half as good as it did here down at the test, I think we're going to have a great shot of winning this thing tomorrow night. And in Elliott's other Bud shootout race, he finished Tenth. Mike. There's another big change. He has a new crew chief in the number 38 this year. But shootout practice coming at you. Now. Speed Weeks on Speed continues next live from Daytona. Cars lined up for but shootout practice, but where is our defending Nextel Cup champ? He's with Dave Burns. And in fact, Mike, he noticed as he was walking over to his car that some of his competitors were already making their way onto the track. Uh, Smoke, I, I guess that means you're next. So which means that you're wasting my time getting ready to go out there and do what I need to do. You want to go get in line, is that what you're telling me? Well, if I can ease in here and talk at the same time, which uh, I think I can still do that. We'll and I think after watching you yesterday, which was a long, long day of media, uh, yes, you can do that. And you're ready to go racing instead of just talking about it, right? Uh, I've been racing over the winter, which is... Uh, kind of why I'm cringing a little bit, but uh, no, I'm looking forward to it today. I haven't been uh, able to run with these guys in a pack for a long time, so uh, this is the uh, fun part of the weekend so far. And how healthy and how good do you feel to get this season started, Tony? Uh, come check with me in an hour. <laughs> I'll know for sure, but uh, it's not bad once I get in here. It's just getting in through these rib guards is the hard part, but uh, we'll see what happens after I bounce around for an hour. Okay, and tell us a little uh, first time drafting in this Monte Carlo. You've seen it in testing. Uh, what do you expect it to be like? I didn't see it in testing. I played hooky, so uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting. The, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be a big difference from the other car. I mean, it's it's hopefully just faster, but I don't think balance-wise it's going to be a big deal. Okay. Defending champion Tony Stewart getting ready to head out for a little bud shootout practice, Mike, and uh, I think he's ready to go. I think he's ready to stop doing all the uh, talking and being off for the winter and really put it down on the track. Agree. Well, he still may be a little bit sore from that chili bowl flip in the midget, not once but twice. But he's good to go. And obviously playing hooky last January didn't hurt him this past year here at Daytona. Not a bit. When we last left you, Jimmy Johnson was first in line for Bud Shootout practice. But now our uh, Cape Crusader has climbed from his car and taken a run in the other direction at breakneck speed. Okay, not quite breakneck speed. Here he goes. Marty, what's happening? I would call it a jog, Mike, is actually what it was for Jimmy Johnson. What happened was he got to that end of the line. He was first in line. The official said, you know what? You haven't signed in. And if you're a competitor or a driver, they have a sign-in sheet. You have to sign your name right beside that. And that's what Jimmy had to do. They sent him back to the garage, climbed down the car, jogged over to the sign-in sheet, signed himself in. Now he's allowed to go practice. That'll be 1,000 points to Larry Mack. And, and the thing is right now, Larry Mack, you got to train these guys all over again. It's a new year. Sometimes you have to remind them there's certain procedures you've got to do, and signing in is one of them. And no matter where you're at, they will not bring the release sheet to you. You have to go to the release sheet. <laughs> well, at least the lucky thing about it, he wasn't way on the far end of pit road because it is a long <laughs> hike if they'd gotten down on pit road right now where the cars, Mark Martin in particular, is parked. It would have been a, quite a jog back down. But more likely he'd have turned around and went backwards down pit road. <laughs> 
course, Jimmy, the defending champion of this Budweiser shootout from last year, decided on that pit stop they would uh, they would go with four tires when most of the competitors went with two. And as normal at Daytona, four tires, four fresh tires prevailed. And, and let's talk about why that is, Larry, because you would think with the banking here, a lot of times the other super speed, the other super speedway like Talladega, you could have put two tires or maybe be no tires and gotten by with it. But here at Daytona, it's not about just strictly speed. It's about holding it wide open. You'll see that Valvoline countdown to green clock a lot in our coverage throughout Speed Weeks. That is the countdown to the green flag for the Daytona 500. And here we go. Next Hell Cup cars are on track for Bud shootout practice. Now you look at Elliott Sadler in the 38 car up there. You can already see a little bit of smoke off that car. I think what that is is tire rub. Now we talked about all the testing that went on down here. A lot of the teams actually didn't test their Budweiser shootout car. They tested what they thought would be their best car for the 500. But by the new testing rules, they cannot test anymore this year at a restrictor plate racetrack. So they tested a car they maybe are anticipating having to race at Talladega in the spring. So a lot of these cars are untested. You might see a lot of fenders rubbing tires because it's not been on the racetrack this winter. But the good thing about it, though, guys, this is really just kind of like a tune-up deal. It's a non-points race, so if you're going to kind of gamble with maybe an unknown, it's not a bad time to bring it out. At the front of the field, familiar-looking number, but new colors for Mark Martin. Second return, if you will. Uh, oh, driving man. for AAA for Jack Rouse, the number six. Looks the same. About that car is different. It's a lot of things different, but you notice right there, the 12 car, of Ryan Newman, he's already dropped to the inside. That car was bottomed out a ton as he went off into turn one right there, Larry. He's already going to bring it back down to pit road. He's going to do some work because the sparks were flying out beneath it. Bad boy. Really, really bad. Yeah, he's going to bring it back to the garage area and let Matt Boyle and the crew chief in that group go to work on it. Jeff Gordon, Elliott Sadler, the cars look the same, but there's a lot that's different. There's Brian Vickers, 25, the GMAC Chevy. And right behind, 36 on the inside in black, yellow, and white. That is another MB2 Chevrolet, the third car out of that shot. Bill Elliott. Yeah, being followed pretty closely right there by that kind of orange car. Happens to be uh, Kevin Harvick in number 29. Do Reese's you, Cup. I, you know, we've been coming here a long time between the three of us. There's got to be a century or more. Do you remember Bill Elliott coming here to Chevrolet? I don't think Bill Elliott has ever driven a Chevrolet. I'm going to check on that as our week unfolds, but I don't think he has ever been in a Chevrolet of any type. He raced the family Ford after his dad, George. Harry Melling bought the team. They continued in Fords. He moved over to Ray Everham with a Dodge. And he drove for Junior Johnson, of course, at that in, point in that was Fords. running Fords. Yeah. Interesting. But if that be the case, that means he's driven for all the big manufacturers as far as that's concerned in racing. And to help our fans understand, okay, how do you get into the Budweiser shootout? Well, there's 21 teams in it. We had 17 Bud poll winners from 2005. The other four spots are filled by previous winners of this race. That includes Mark Martin, Kenny Schrader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Bill Elliott in the 36 car. And most importantly, it's previous winners who are still active competitors. Uh, or you might see a few other names come out of the motor coach lot. I think you have to be in the top 50 in points <laughs> to be eligible. So um, that means active, I would say. So what you're saying is Rusty Wallace would have been eligible to come out and run this race. Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte were the other two drivers that were eligible by virtue of being a past winner of this race. Right. But there are other past winners who did race somewhere last year. Jeffrey Bodine, Daryl Waltrip, and others. But would not be eligible according to the criteria that's in place this year. So we, we have 21 competitors. And the real goal here, Jeff Hamlin was talking a while ago about handling, handling, handling. You, you're going to be here, us and the NBC guys talking about that for the next 10 or 11 days. Is because the longer you run and the tires start sliding around, you burn that fuel load off. The cars will want to start shoving the nose, especially on the exit of the corner. Jeff, especially over off turn two. So that's what you want to do is work on that. And it takes getting well into a run before that will show up. It usually takes a while. And, again, we talked to Bill Elliott, who's won here at Daytona, and everything he's ever been in, he's told us very quickly, if you want to win the 500, if you want to win this Budweiser shootout, you've got to have a race car you can hold wide open all the way around this racetrack for the entire race. So it's going to be real important to make your car work good. Now, early on, all these cars are probably going to work pretty well. But the further they run, that's when they're going to start shaking. Okay, 
way at the yeah, uh, Casey Kane, new colors. Side of, uh, Kenny Schrader out there, who will be starting on the pole for the race tomorrow night. Get a little push here by uh, Tony Stewart, so he must be feeling pretty racy. See Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight Budweiser car back there. This is a brand new car, untested. And, and I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a lot like his dad. What he, will, he started at the back of this pack. And what he'll try to do is see if he can work up through the pack and go from the rear to the front. That tells him he's got a pretty good race car. Talking about situations. How about that number 11 car right there being driven by Denny Hamlin? All of a sudden, he winds up in this Budweiser shootout. And this rookie, I mean, he's been phenomenal at the end of last year in the Bush Series as well as in the Cup right at the end of the year. But all of a sudden, he finds himself right in the thick of things here at Daytona. I don't know what's going through his mind right now. Well, not just him, but the man behind him, Carl Edwards in 99. How many total restrictor plate races does Carl have under his belt? Not very many. And this is Jason Leffler's first Nextel Cup restrictor plate race, but you see him behind his teammate, Tony Stewart. I talked to Denny Hamlin's crew chief, Mike Ford, this morning. He said Denny spent a lot of time talking to Tony Stewart about this because here he's in the – he only gets two practices this afternoon before that race tomorrow night. And Larry Mack. I saw him on an airplane coming back from Las Vegas at the first part of this week. He was out there testing his Bush car, so he's been really busy since he got to Daytona on Wednesday night. And this is a new role for Stewart, not as defending champion. He's been that before, but as team leader and mentor. Stewart was always the junior teammate to Bobby Labonte, not in wins or point position necessarily, but in terms of years of experience. Now, Stewart is the senior member of that team, and he's got two young guns looking up to him. Let's go back down to the garage and Dave Burns. And Ryan Newman was one of the first cars back in the garage, and Ryan, changing among other things, your helmet. Yeah, had one of the uh, earplugs went quite right, and uh, was, the voice was dropping, the spotter was dropping out, and that's not really a good thing, so... Um, just swapped the helmet out and uh, just checking over everything. This is a brand new race car. It's not one that we tested here. So uh, just checking over everything, make sure the tolerances are right, and uh, it's a good all-tell dodge for uh, tomorrow night. And just to repeat, your car was bottoming out, and they're, and they're working on the on the, uh, the height adjustment? Yeah, just checking the, checking the stuff, see what's hitting. Sometimes it's good to hit, sometimes it's not good to hit. We're just checking. Yeah, it does work both ways there, and obviously first of the season, checking a lot of things like his helmet as well and all the connections there, Mike. Like Tony Stewart, Ryan Newman has a new teammate for 2006. But shootout practice continues on speed after this. Red flag at Daytona for the 25 of Brian Vickers. Something let go on the right side of the car. Looked like smoke out across the caps, but watch the blue and white 25. appears that maybe was coming out the exhaust pipe so it definitely looks like this thing uh, has had an engine let go on it he only had eight laps on the racetrack in this practice session but right in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. I was gonna say talk about somebody being lucky that eight car there is gonna be saying oh no not this at the very beginning of the year brand new race car very lucky right there well let's ride with Dale Jr. It wasn't much better. Not at all. Scott Riggs. Scott Riggs, a 10 car. It looks like right there coming out the left side exhaust as well. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to get to the inside, but of course there were cars there because, Jeff, you just had talked about they were about three wide as they came out of the trioval. Yeah, Casey Kane right there decided to kind of like get right in the middle, and it really got close. I mean, everybody's lucky. The good thing when you see it coming out the exhaust pipe, it's normally not dropping oil. They'll check the track and we'll restart, but shoot out practice. Race day built by Home Depot and it's live from Daytona. On the day of the Daytona 500, 11 a.m. Eastern time gets you ready for the race right here on speed. The big boom in butt shootout practice. Here's Marty. And Brian Vickers uh, still in the car discussing it with David Evans, one of the head engine builders at Hendrick Motorsports, trying to go over exactly what he felt inside the race car and uh, explain to him so maybe they can diagnose what happened. And uh, what did happen, Brian? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we were uh, 
running pretty good there. The Jim AC Chevy team, uh, you know, had a good car. Uh, this is the car we ran at Talladega last year, and we were real happy with uh, with how it was handling. Engine was running great. Um, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not an engine builder. I, I can't assume to know what what took place, but it just let go. All the gauges were fine, um, and, and it just let go. In the middle of a big pack, too, were you concerned about other cars at that point? Were you able to wave at all? Uh, yeah, I got my hand out the window. Uh, Junior was right behind me, uh, actually pushing us to the front, and uh, and 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 he uh, he was he got out of the way before we got the turn. I stayed high, um, so everything worked out fine. Uh, luckily, there was uh, a lot of good drivers around me, and it all worked out. I guess the greatest concern is 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 this the same engine package you're going to run for the 500? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I've got to talk to the engine department about it. I'm sure we'll be fine. The, the, the Hendrick Motorsports uh, engine uh, yeah, department does a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, they found some good power for us down here, and uh, they do a good job year-round. I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll be fine come the 500. And you guys were talking to the commercial baker about Team Hendrick being a little concerned. That's exactly the case. Parked right beside him, Joe Nemechek's team, who also runs a Hendrick engine. They came over immediately trying to figure out if they could find out what happened. Mike? Thanks, Marty. Now, Larry, Jeff, one thing interesting about what happened to Vickers' car, we saw all that smoke from the right bank, from the right side, and it was about three or four seconds later before we started to see anything coming out the left side tailpipe. What could that indicate? Well, a lot of times to me, with the oil that we at least indicated, to me, I would think it'd be something like in a valve train, a valve got down, maybe got into a piston. Uh, but usually when you see that kind of situation there, Mike, that's what leads me to believe they got a valve train problem. But again, what Marty was talking about, most of the time, these big teams like Hendrick Motorsports, and we've seen in the past, when one of them has a problem, the rest of them kind of kind of safety up and they get a little bit concerned because that's usually the same across all the other teams that ever use their power plants. All right, Dave is with the man who was right behind Vickers when that let go. Yeah, he was a little closer to that, Mike, than uh, probably you want to be in that situation. Uh, how, how close was that? I was right behind him. Um, didn't throw any fluid on my car, so uh, that was kind of good for everybody to kind of get out of his way so he could get out of everybody else's way. Everybody did everything right there, and uh, car's great. Uh, sort of boxed in right there. Really couldn't show what I can, everything I got, but uh, we got a real good car. Do you want to make any changes on it? Are you pretty happy with the way it is right now? We got a, we got a tight condition, uh, late entry all the way through the center, and work on that a little bit, but uh, want to try a carburetor too. Um, more concerned really about that practice later today when the temperature and, and, and uh, you know the track condition will be more toward what we're racing. Just spend a little time, work out a few bugs. It's a brand new car. That's the first time it's been on a racetrack, so I'm real happy with it. So are you, and do you think everyone else is kind of holding back a little bit right now to, to wait for later and make some more uh, aggressive or competitive moves? I think a lot of guys are out there just trying to shake the bugs out of themselves and get the rust off. You know, we all kind of, we all out there making some, uh, you know, making some moves and seeing what still works and what doesn't. But uh, it's fun, and uh, everybody looks like they got good cars, but uh, we got a strong one. We got a real fast car. I'm glad to hear you have bugs, because I've had a couple today as well. We're working the bugs out as well, Junior. Thanks, Mike. Dale Junior has the fastest lap of this practice session. Here is Dale Jarrett, a three-time winner of the Bud Shootout. Car up on jack stands in the garage. Watch as he goes. Pride and titles go on the line. No, it's not NASCAR on Fox. It's Pinks. Lose the race. Lose your ride. Season 2, February 22nd. They've got people standing in line to bring their cars on these shows. And run it. Winner take off. Jeff Hammond, have you ever raced for a pink slip? I got to... Uh, just Do I look like I'm curious. from Alabama? Oh, <laughs> <stop> <laughs> it. You got me. <laughs> Mike, I think we should go to break on that one. I yeah, have I think we should to come too. back with. Track cleaning continues. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> Welcome back to Daytona where the track is green and Michael Waltrip is out there kind of all by himself. Well, you know, I think I know what's going on here, Mike. Even though they will not be by themselves tomorrow night in that Budweiser shootout, Remember, this is a brand new race team. They built all new cars. This is a different car from what he will be trying to qualify for the Daytona 500 with. The theory is if you make your car faster by itself, it'll be faster in a pack. But there's 56 cars here for the Daytona 500. In those practice sessions tomorrow, which we will be covering, it'll be pandemonium. Getting a clean lap by yourself will be almost impossible. You learned something today with this car. Maybe you can apply it to that Daytona 500. Now for the political intrigue that would make the U.S. Congress proud. 
three weeks ago, Michael Waltrip would have had to time his way into the Daytona 500, but uh, for Bill Davis. But Michael make it, made a deal with Doug Bobble, the owner of the 77 team, which closed its doors shortly after Christmas. And this is now last year's 77, though it has a 55, and Doug's name is owner. And owner points that go with the 77. I got to be an honest man. I don't blame Bill Davis. I don't blame Michael Waltrip. I don't, don't blame Doug Bobble. But that is the most absurd thing I have ever heard. But Michael is in the Daytona 500. It's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Da, da, da. <laughs> Speaking of absurd. No, let's not. Let's go to Dave Burns. But I can speak of absurd things, Mike, so, you know, whatever. It's not absurd with Kevin Harvick right now. He's actually uh, in the garage because he had a couple of clearance issues. Really nothing that wrong with the car. That he was Work on the front skirt there. Make sure it is up off the ground and make sure uh, the front end isn't hitting too hard. So, uh, other than that, they're uh, quiet now down here in his garage and pretty happy with the 29 car. Let's get back on track where Dale Earnhardt Jr. has posted the fastest lap in this practice session for the 21 cars that will square off in the Budweiser shootout tomorrow night. Now, contrary to what Michael Waltrip was doing, you can see those that group of cars sitting on pit road. They want a big pack of cars. They know tomorrow night it's going to be 21 cars out there in a big pack. And looks like almost Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car, he's somewhat doing the same thing because he's out there by himself. I saw smoke from behind Johnson's car as he went off into turn one. That could have been tire smoke, but I think everybody now is just a little bit edgy after what happened to Brian Richards. sign of it there. Jimmy Johnson, a big year. Four times he went to victory lane starting in Las Vegas. Beating Bobby Labonte to the line at Lowe's Motor Speedway. On the Monster Mile, Dover International Speedway. And wrapping it up with the double. At uh, his house, he says, Lowe's Motor Speedway near Charlotte. And, and I think that was the, the last time that he carried an in-car camera, and it went downhill from there. The in-car camera or his season? Uh, his season. So what does that tell you about in-car camera? Carry one. Got to have exactly it. Right. Got to have it. Got to have it. Where's Jimmy on the speed chart here? 17. Uh, two laps completed. And he'll complete his third at speed this time around. And Mike, what's interesting, you talk about 17th. That's where he started last year in the Budweiser shootout to come home victorious. So uh, starting back in the back is not a bad thing. The starting lineup for this race, though, not determined by practice or time trial speeds, but by a draw, which was conducted last evening and saw Kenny Schrader as the luckiest man in Daytona Beach. He pulled the pole. And Jimmy's outside, I believe. Isn't he second? Yes, he is yeah. outside. Yeah. He will be outside tomorrow night. The Scott Riggs in the 10 car, Jimmy Murray there in the 26 car, Joe Nemechek in the 01 car running together. They were. This was the group that was somewhat sitting on pit road waiting for a group of cars. Problem is, there's just not a lot of cars out there right now on the racetrack. Well, they're starting to gang back up together coming up off the of turn two right there. You'll see Dale Jarrett, and I believe it's Kyle Busch right there on the inside in the five car going down the back straight away. And just ahead of that little group is Tony Stewart, our defending champion. So, uh, before much longer, another lap, we should have a pretty good little pack right here to race it to find out who's got uh, what. You know, Mike, you were talking about Carl Edwards, and we were talking about Denny Hamlin. Uh, you know, Kyle Busch only has one full season of That's Nextel right. Cup restrictor plate races under his belt. Sat on the Bud Pole at Fontana, California last spring, and so he's in the Budweiser shootout in the five car. Tony Stewart has radioed into his crew that his ribs are feeling fine. No ill effects from... His recuperation from a couple of flips at the Chili Bowl. That was a pretty wild ride. I don't know if you've seen uh, replay or not, but he took a pretty wild ride out there. And, you know, we talked about Tony Stewart playing hooky from testing because he was racing. Another man that played hooky is the man that now in the garage area with an engine expired. Brian Vickers was not down here because he had a hernia removed, and David Green had to test the 25 cars during the January testing. Kevin Harvick up the hill, and... Here comes the pack. Scott Riggs in the 10 came here last year as Joe Nemechek's teammate for MB2 in a Chevrolet. Now he's moved over to Evernham Motorsports in the third Dodge for that team. Brought sponsor Valvoline with him. 
So the car looks the same, but it's all different under the paint. And when they unload their Daytona 500 car tomorrow for practice, that is definitely one of the teams they will have to either qualify or race their way into the Daytona 500. Well, guys, Kyle Busch was uh, third fastest in the draft early on and uh, pretty quick. And I talked to him about the car. He said it handles very well. But Larry Mack and Jeff, they had a fairly significant left side rub on the tires. So they had to work on that, raise the left side up just a little bit as best they could. I asked him about the engine program. I asked Alan Gustafson, are you worried about your engine? He said, no, not until I know what happened. But right now it's all speculation. Until we know concrete what happened with the 25 engine, I'm not going to worry about my engine package. If you can believe one thing, Marty. Knowing that Hendrick group, they will know exactly what happened to that engine by tomorrow because most of those components, if they can't tell for sure, will wind up back in Charlotte and they'll wind up doing performing basically an autopsy on that engine to figure out exactly what went wrong. And, and normally when you have a problem with an engine here at Daytona or Talladega where you run the carburetor restrictor plate, it's normally in the valve train because they don't turn these engines a lot of RPM. Only about 71 or 7200 RPM do they turn the engines compared to like 92, 9300 with Fontana in a couple of weeks. You know, every time I see that 21 car with a different driver, I get goofed up. Every time it's red and white, I still think it's David Pearson or Neil Bonnet in it. Uh, and it's in its Air Force Blue, I'm still thinking it's Ricky Rudd. Of course, it's Ken Schrader. Uh, Rudd has stepped away from the sport for a while. He did not announce retirement, per se, but he stepped back after uh, racing full-time on this circuit since the age of 18. And Ken Schrader has moved over to drive for the Wood Brothers this year. And what's interesting about that package, we talk about drivers with new teams, new crew chiefs, is actually David Hyder, Ken Schrader's crew chief from BAM Racing from last year, made the move over to the Wood Brothers with Ken Schrader. So at least he has that factor from last year that he worked with. We got a pretty good sized pack of cars right there, guys, as we take a look at the 88 car, Dale Jarrett, who won the last restricted plate race of the season at Talladega. Uh, and again, he's got a new crew chief. They've worked together in the past, but uh, Slugger Lab is in that crew chief now for him this season. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of package they can put together. Because remember, a year ago, uh, he struggled down here when it came to you know, restricted plate racing. What they had, we've been talking about handling. Remember, he sat on the bud pole here for the Daytona 500. They had a car that qualified good. I loved Robert Yates' quote about that. He said, we held on to the bud pole for the Daytona 500. We had it for eight days. We lost it in eight seconds when they dropped the green flag. It's <laughs> pretty accurate assessment. And never got it back. I, I just really believe that here at Daytona for Speed Weeks, I think the eight predominant Fords, the five Roush Fords, the two Yates and the Wood Brothers, I believe they're going to be a factor. I think Yates did a science project on the three Fords that were not in the chase for the next Dell Cup at Talladega. I think he put an engine package in those cars that he was trying to see if it would live for 500 miles, plus win a race. He accomplished both, and I think all eight of those Fords will benefit from that package here this weekend. I'll go you one further. I think a Ford will win the Daytona 500, and I'll tell you why after we hear from Dave Burns. Well, I want to hear now, Mike. Why do you think? <laughs> well, the last time Ford changed bodies, from the Thunderbird to the Taurus, I asked Jack Rouse, the Fords are winning everything with a T-Bird. Why are you so excited about the Taurus? And he told me, you can only throw so much paint at an old canvas. <laughs> now Ford has a whole new body with the Fusion, which essentially means a new nose and tail. Uh, I don't think we'll see their full hand until next Sunday, Dave. That's perfect. Yeah, that might be a really good bet, Mike. And uh, speaking of Robert Yates, just a little bit earlier, I checked on the 38 car because Robert was around it when Elliot brought it into the garage, just finding out how their Fusion might be running and why they brought it in. Elliot's carburetor was not operating uh, extremely well. The 88 car was doing fine, so they had a similar carburetor that the 88 was running put on the 38 car, plus some clearance issue on the right place. Marty? Well, Dave, I've tracked down a busy man, Jeff Andrews, uh, the head engine builder for Hendrick Motorsports. Have you been able to diagnose what happened with the 25s engine? Uh, not yet, Marty. We'll um, get it back to Charlotte tonight, get in the van and get it back and look at it. Um, you know, right now we're not too worried about it. Same stuff um, we had down here three weeks ago testing. Everything looked really, really good after the test. So uh, we just have to see what we got. Is this the first issue you've had, including testing with any of your engines? Yes, yeah, so far. But uh, like I said, same stuff we had down here testing, a lot of it, same stuff we raced towards the end of last year. So we'll just get a look at it and see what we got. Is it the same exact package that your teams will have for the 500? 
Uh, it's a little bit different, you know, we look at the shootout and we look at qualifying, we look at just, just a little bit different packaging, a little race. So, so. All right, they're going to stick this engine in a van here and as soon as they can get it out of the car and take it back to Charlotte. So, Jeff, you're exactly right. They're going to evaluate this engine tonight back in Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's a very telling statement because if Jeff Andrews was worried about that engine, they'd be stuffing it into a plane. And he might be going up there with it. So not that concerned about what happened to Brian Vickers. Kyle Busch now tops the practice chart in this one-hour practice for the Budweiser shootout. If you rotisserie baseball and fantasy football junkies are looking for a new fix, Speed Fantasy Cup Racing has the games for you. Build your team, gather points, and make trades. Speed Fantasy Cup offers full season packages, multi-race games, or even one race contests. Play the Bush Series or an Xtel Cup. You can even compete in the Bud Shootout. Look for the link at speedtv.com. Things got pretty racy here a moment ago. Casey Kane on the left of your screen in the nine. It's down just almost into the side of the 17 car of Matt Kenseth. Show you what almost looks like here. And remember, this is at well over 190 miles per hour. They're out there doing this two and three wide. Look at the rookie right there, guys. Denny Hamlin in 11 car right now leading Mark Martin and uh, his teammate Carl Edwards. Fabling countdown to green clock. That's to the green flag in the Daytona 500. I, I once heard a driver say, and I can't remember who it was, I never learned anything when I was leading. Is that the case or is that not the case here? Well, I think in these practice sessions, Mike, you almost have to put your car in every configuration if you possibly can. You want it out front where you've got clean air on the nose. You want it behind a car where you have no air on the nose. You want it to the outside of someone, to the inside of someone. That's the only way you're going to find out how your car is driving, especially when you get on the older tires. Good point. I think the driver said that was leading by about half a lap at the time, you know. Oh. Marty? <laughs> well, Mike, you guys talked about this new combination of Slugger Labby and Dale Jarrett, and uh, so far, DJ not very happy with the handling of the 88 car, and you talked about how important handling was. Too tight on entry for DJ, and I asked Slugger, I said, man, your tires look good. You're the only one I've seen not rubbing. He said, actually, that's a problem. I want to be rubbing because we need to be down on the ground, and we're not quite down as far as we need to be too tight right now for Dale Jarrett. Dave? Marty, we talked to Junior a little bit earlier about working the bugs out. There was just a little bug in Jeff Gordon's 24 car that he wanted worked out. It was with the shifter. Uh, talked with Steve Latart, his crew chief. They had taken it out and sort of repositioned it. It wasn't really a malfunctioning part or anything like that. It just wasn't in the spot that Jeff really wanted it. They replaced that, put it in a little different spot, and uh, sent it back out. Thanks, Dave. Now, looking at Jeff Gordon's car here, there's one thing about the complexion of this car that's different from everybody else's. The okay. numbers are vinyl, uh, the DuPont is vinyl, but the flames, the paint, and all that? Everything real. is painted. It's no, there's no vinyl in those graphics. <laughs> no vinyl, everything is painted. But you know, just talking about these cars that are not driving good, you, you have such a small supply of things that you can change because NASCAR locks you into so many things. They lock you into the rear spring package that you run. They issue your rear shocks. Everyone ra runs the same rear shocks. So really all you have, and that's what you see a lot of teams working with, is front springs, front shocks, and front sway bar. And I know everywhere we go, as you see them three wide at the end of the back stretch, we talk about getting the cars down on the ground. Soft setup. But what you got to be careful here, Jeff, getting the front down on the ground so much, it kicks that rear spoiler up in the air, and that hurts the, the speed of the race car. So there's a fine line there, the attitude of the car going through the air. Yeah, you hear a lot of these guys talk about the attitude, and that's what you know, probably is going on with Slugger Labby in an 88 car. He knows he wants to get the car free or get down in the corner, but he's got to be careful. Take too much right front spring away from it, all of a sudden the rear blade comes up and he won't run down the straightaway. So you have to kind of like work a little bit of both front springs with some front sway bar to get the car where you want it the right attitude. One hour to try to find the best balance. There will be one more practice session later on in early evening today for the Budweiser shootout. But right now, that number five, Kyle Busch, the Kellogg Chevrolet, is quickest. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Budweiser Chevy, second. 
Kevin Harvick, GM Goodrich Chevrolet, third fastest. And, and, and let me interrupt here before we get away from it too very much. You talked about earlier about getting cars in different positions and the reason why you want to do that. Right now, as you see the eight car pushing Ryan Newman up through here, being followed by Jamie McMurray, uh, a lot of times you get behind a guy like that, all of a sudden the air doesn't go in your cow to feed the engine, and you can lose horsepower. So you got to put that car in a lot of different positions to find out, to make sure you, I guess, the air box is getting adequate air through that restrictor plate to make the maximum horsepower. So getting those key positions is real important. And another thing you want to try to learn here, we've already heard Elliot Sadler, by way of scanning his radio, saying he needed a little bit of a gear change. There's not a gear rule here like at the other racetracks, so they're playing with different gears, trying to maximize the horsepower and where the car will suck up in the draft as well. Two cars that look a little off that lap. Off turn two, Matt Kenseth, the white that post uh, number 17. Got loose coming off turn number two and then going up into three. Jamie McMurray climbed the hill and had the toss and catch it. Yeah, a little pitch and catch right there. And I saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. kind of go up the racetrack and said, let me just give you a little bit more room, partner. Like you got your hands full. Here's Marty. A two-time butt shootout winner Kenny Schrader at least starts in the right spot. Can you keep it up there all night long, Kenny? Well, you don't have to be up there all night long. You just got to be up there. Got to <laughs> be up the last there. Lap, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's going to be. They're going to go back and forth. It's it's going to get pretty exciting. Plus the uh, the break and then uh, the pit stop in the middle of the you know to start the last 50 or in the middle of 50 you have to have pit stop. So uh, yeah, it'll be. It'd be good. It's it's dicey already. Yeah, I was going to say, for the first practice, it's kind of crazy out there. Junior's got a donut in the side of his bar. Are you surprised at how intense is this early on? Uh, it gets a little, a little more intense every year. Uh, now, you guys have a pretty significant left side rub. You also had a water temperature up at 240 at one point. Any concerns there? No, we just, uh, we, we've already got that take care of the water and beat her in a quarter pound a little bit and moved her in the house and over just a little bit. And we got it. We got it handled. All right, very good. All right, go back out and get them. Traders, I think, going to try to get a few more laps in this practice, although time is winding down in this first practice of the day. And, and you heard Kenny Schrader talk about that pit stop. That pit stop that comes somewhere in that final 50 laps, we know they're going to have to make one because with these smaller fuel cells, you can only go about 35 laps on fuel. There was no question that pit stop last year that came under green, it was the determining factor who won and lost race. I already talked earlier about Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson putting four fresh tires on, but the big issue was a lot of cars missed pit road, and a lot of them got caught for speeding last year. That was the first time that the electronic high in the sky uh, was monitoring pit road speed. Uh, before, it had been done with stopwatches over segment distances. Beginning last February here at Daytona, it was all electronic, and there was no judge, no jury. It was uh, the time-stamped evidence. You were guilty, not guilty. Busted, as they, as they were saying last yeah. year. You <laughs> got it when you didn't. And, uh, the other thing is about this whole package, as far as things that concern pit stop guys, a lot of new pit crew members on the 24, the 48. I mean, there's a lot of team members there that haven't worked together really under competition. So it's going to be interesting to see how those pit stops kind of play out tomorrow. I didn't make note if any of the drivers were practicing pit road entry uh, as they're coming in in this practice session. I haven't didn't seen appear them that. so far, Mike. I've been kind of keeping an eye on them. I haven't seen anybody really make a bonsai run down on the pit road. And here's Dave in the garage. And just uh, watching Pat Trison and Mark Martin debrief now. Mark was one of those cars that was having a little trouble handling out there. And uh, Pat had told me that they made some changes to make the car turn better. And hopefully that has uh, helped Mark a little bit. And he's going to have another practice tonight. A lot of these guys down here were making some qualifying uh, type changes to their cars, guys. Uh, knowing that uh, later tonight they do more shootout practice racing. Well, like I said, we were talking about that earlier, Dave. You know, you make your car faster by itself. It's going to be faster probably in a pack of cars, but it's just going to be so hard to get that clean, qualifying type run in tomorrow in those practice sessions with the 500 car. I know the number is the same, but that white car just doesn't look like Matt Kenseth, does it? I'm used to, we're used to seeing it in yellow or black. There's a lot of confusing colors out there right now, Mike. Number 17. But there's a couple familiar colors right there at the front of that pack right now, that 24 car of Gordon's and Tony Stewart. And, you know, I was down there during practice for Jeff Gordon's uh, practice session in January, and he looked extremely strong. I mean, he may have worked on his car some since we left here, but that 24 car looked like business as usual when it come to Daytona. He was extremely fast. Tell you what, I know Dale Jr. in that eight car, he talked like he was happy with his car. He looks like he's happy with his car. He looks like right now he can pretty much put that car about anywhere he needs to. 
Kyle Busch quickest, then Junior, then Kevin Harvick in the Reese's Chevy, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin are the fast five in this first one hour of Bud Shootout practice. Congrats to Bobby Gerhardt and Matt McCall, who will start on the front row of the ARCA race here in Daytona. You'll see that on speed as Speed Weeks rolls on from the World Center of Racing. So Kyle Busch will win this first practice session for Jeff Hammonds and Larry Mack. I'm Mike Joy. Hope you're enjoying Speed Weeks on Speed.